Judge taking on TT Esports here in this best at a three quarterfinal matchup here in what is the final quarterfinal matchup, as you saw in the bracket. But it is a double elimination on top of that, so no matter what happens here, uh, you'll still be moving on in some way or another. The winner playing Trademark and the loser, of course, uh, playing... Who lost the trade? Q Squad, Q -squad That's who it was, yeah, as you said right there in the bracket. So, anyways, game number one here. There we go with the Blind Band taking place. So, we are looking at Tempest and Ophelia. Blind Band by our Legion Squad over here with Pudge. And Tundra and Jeraziah taken care of from TT Esports. So, very, very sound and solid bands here. Nothing you can really question by any means for these two teams. Yeah, the junglers have been seeing lots of blind bands recently. Yeah. Uh, Tempest, Ophelia, especially Tempest, because Tempest can be very, very versatile. He can go both in that jungle um, and just farm up a ton. We've seen Tempest just get level 8 so damn quickly before anyone else. And then we've also seen Tempest that go in the suicide lane, and it's quite effective with that deny and just the ability to still get last hits with your conversions. Mm -hmm. um, so he's very, very strong. And then Hellborn uh, banning that Tundra and Jeraziah, that seems to be kind of the, the two most often banned heroes in that Hellborn position. Well, I should say second pick position, because now you can't still be first pick on Hellborn. But, yeah, um, yeah so that nothing nothing strikes me as crazy right now. The locks have begun and almost finished, actually, and it's a very, very safe lock pool right now. We have Pebbles, um, Plague Rider, Bubbles, as well as Glacius, and Aluna there locked for Mega Beaver. So uh, lots of suicide and lots of very, very safe support. Style yeah, you know, you see, it's definitely a save. I mean, you're right. And that it, I'm a little bit taken back by that. Again, as we were just talking about in the pregame, expecting to see some fun pickups, perhaps some fun strategies. And really with TTE Sports, I mean, when this lockpick mode first came out, they were really the first team, I think, at least uh, in the high-tier competitive scene, that we saw taking advantage of this lockpick mode and locking heroes like Scout, Hammerstorm, Shadowblade, and doing these crazy locks. And, and they made it work, though, at the same time. We saw them pick up Scout several times, and they were doing very well with him even as a result of it but it seems like that's kind of calmed down for them as well as a lot of these teams even and you know you kind of wonder if that maybe it will start to step up more and more as a popular strategy with this lock pick mode but for now it seems like the go-to strategy is just locking the very sent heroes at least four to the six just to make sure and then maybe one or two oddball but this one all throughout uh, six very very powerful heroes that either team I'm sure would be very happy and pleased to pick up. Keeper of the Forest and Polywalk Priest are our first couple of bands here uh, right off the bat. So you talked about it. the jungles being blind banned on top of Keeper of the Forest right away in the regular band pool. So Parasite really the only one left out of those kind of quad jungle heroes. At least I like to classify with Tempest, Ophelia, and Keeper of the Forest along with Parasite. Of course there's others. But yeah, kind of the powerful quad right there you could say. But anyways, uh, starting with the bands here. Again, Keeper and Polywalk. There's in the Wild Soul. And they're a very strong hero in himself. Uh, Fade as well, you see right there. So, um, yeah, Fade is a hero that just gets picked up so often. Keep of the Forest, as you, as you mentioned, he, that that hero has been seeing a lot of play recently, um, and I don't really know why. <laughs> I know that TT Sports picks him, but they honestly they pick him up way too early for my liking. Um, I, I've talked about this before. It's very very easy to counter Keep of the Forest strategy. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be one of their sort of quote-unquote all-in strategies where they just constantly and massively push. Again, I think it can work against teams that aren't ready for it, but really, honestly, the, the, I feel like the better teams will be able to just completely overrun you with massive amounts of experience. Because when you do push, obviously, you lose out on a lot of experience because you have to group up, yeah. and you know clearly you're sharing experience there. But anyway, the bands have finished there. Plywood Priest, uh, Wild Soul Fade, as you mentioned. Draconis and Maraxis. Draconis, no surprise there. Um, he's like the one of the of those four hard carries in here that was actually banned. There is still Silhouette, Mage Bane, Dark Lady. Of course, Forsaken Archer is one here to, to note. Uh, TD Esports loves to pick up that Forsaken yes. Archer. Yeah. Hey, the funny thing about Draconis, too, I know that we're kind of classifying him as that quad of just very powerful heroes uh, that you can pick up, but it seems like he's actually becoming the most pow the most popular one to even blind ban first or to even ban first over the others because he's kind of just obviously just really it's hard to even argue against the being the best farmer in the game and just has done so much lately in the competitive pawn scene. So, uh, yeah, just a note there now. Another note is that Mega Beaver, there, the captain over here for Pudge, manages to get the first pick on Nymphora, and that's a very powerful first pick, especially considering they have Pebbles to pick up 
in that lock picking stage. So a little bit interesting that TT Esports, whether that was just simply an oversight or if they really kind of just saw it coming and figured that they can deal with it with allowing uh, with allowing our Legion team over here in Gen Dendi's Jungle Devos uh, to go with that Nymphora first pick. So I got to think with that lock pool that they're definitely going to first pick Pebbles here to get that Pebbles and Nymphora very, very powerful combination, of course. Now TT Esports, they respond with the Legionnaire Silhouette, actually, silhouette. themselves. So, so much for those quad t uh, jungle here that I was kind of listing off. Of course, Legionnaire, he's kind of been stepping up every now and then as another popular jungle hero. And again, picked up here by TT Esports with their first couple of picks. So, love to see me some Legionnaire, Trough. It's uh, definitely a fun hero to watch. It is, and we've talked about this uh, a little bit before, but that uh, that nerf to the courier, I really, nerf or buff, I don't know what I should really call it, but <laughs> change. The, yeah, the change to the courier where it no longer blocks neutral camps. N n neutral yeah. camps, nor ancient spawns, anything like that. It is an indirect buff to Legionnaire because people would use that very, very frequently against mm -hmm. the Legionnaire to just stop a lot of his camps. You ward one camp, you ward the other, the you use the, the, uh, the courier to block another, and then Legionnaire is kind of screwed. Yeah. So he doesn't really have to worry about that anymore. So he, it's a little bit more, more safe of a pick. And there is a Dark Lady a Torturer. That's a very, very powerful lineup already. Nymphora, especially when you have first position and Pebbles is on the board. Yeah. I really like actually how the lineup is, is shaping up for, um, for Gen... Dendi's Jungle Devo. So. I know. It's, I just, I keep like not wanting to say it, but I find myself saying <laughs> I, I want to start saying Pudge, though. It's just so much easier than all that. Uh, but anyways, yeah, you're right. I mean, Dark Lady Torture to follow up to the Nymphoria, as you said. Pebbles with that first pick in the lock pick, very likely. This really is shaping up to be a very, very powerful potential team here over here on the Legion side. TT Esports goes to the Legionnaire Silhouette, as we mentioned, a star. We'll see how they finish off. You got Kinesis being right-clicked here by Leon Black for a while. Now, of course, Kinesis, one of the four heroes that have been newly introduced into the tournament rules, uh, I believe now really even close to a couple weeks here. Uh, we've seen Kinesis, I believe, once it was. It was more of a, not necessarily a uh, serious game, it seemed like, but uh, we did at least see him once. So I don't know if maybe that's some potential here that GT Esports sees in him and maybe wants to kind of pick him up here as kind of that oddball hero that we, we were talking about going into the series. But there isn't a lot of time. Slicks is kind of undecided, but they're going to go with Succubus out of left field right here. So... They were right clicking uh, Kinesis there the whole time, and all of a sudden they just end up picking Succubus. What, are, what, are, what is of that, Trout? I don't think Succubus is a good pick here. Uh, there's a lot of stuns and silences already on the board. Yeah. Nymph 4 is a very, very annoying hero to channel something against because, say, Nymph 4 does cast her stun and then Succubus ults right there. Like, the stun still goes, you mm -hmm. know? It, it's not like. Uh, um, I want to think of another kind of stun, like say Magmus' is stun, where Succubus holds it. You can't Magmus yeah. stun after that. It's like it's still going on. There's the Pebbles. Uh, very obvious Nymphora Pebbles coming, coming out there. There's Glacius pick coming out from uh, TT Esports. I, I do think, though, Succubus is arguably the, the strongest solo mid hero in the game. Mm -hmm. And if he's able to, to dominate his mid and then you know roam around and gank, applying <laughs> pressure on the other lanes and freeing up some space for um, whoever decides to play sil Silhouette, that's going to be fine. There's the Plague Rider. I assume that's going to be a Suicide Plague Rider, maybe yeah. with a Glacius Silhouette top, and then a Succubus mid, and the Legionnaire in the jungle. And uh, what I hope that Jungle uh, jungle Devos, I just want to say Mega Beaver team, honestly, uh, Dendi's Jungle Devos <laughs> does, is man up on this, tri this pseudo tri lane because Legionnaire has very little offer in the early stages of, of the game. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have to wait and see, but that would be my approach to this game. Yeah, yeah, that's a very, very good point. As Bubbles is the final pick from uh, Pudge over here, and again, I can't say I'm really surprised about that. It's definitely making out to be a very powerful lineup, too. We'll see if they decide to man up. That's a good point. You know, if they want to man up, sending that, what what I would guess would be a Nymphora, Dark Liddy, and uh, even Torture up there, something like that, kind of a trial lane setup to match up against that pseudo trial lane being ran by TT Esports. Will they do that, or will they go the safe route? With them being kind of a newer team on the scene, with them oh, going up shit. against a team like TT Esports or well known team, of course, something tells me it is going to be the safe route with going to the short lane and not really wanting to match up against it. But we'll see. We'll see if, uh, again, if Pudge over here decides to man up and go with that as uh, we've now begun the game. And no pause just yet. Going to cross my fingers. Hopefully, I didn't jinx myself. It looks like Bubbles, though, is heading towards the top lane. And he did buy boots. We'll see if he ends up selling them. As, of course, he also has that ward of sight. There's the vote to pause, though. But uh, Bubbles is going to, uh, well, he's keeping the boots for now, so I'm not exactly sure when that time's going to run out. But uh, we're going to sit in a pause hey, here. what so I say? To talk about it. Need yeah. to pee. It's Shocker. the competitive piss pause. The competitive <laughs> piss pause to start every single game, it seems like. Um, yeah, I mean, the sa I guess the safer route is always to put your hard carry bottom. 
But honestly, with this makeup, I think it would be so, so strong if they did a, like a solo Dark Lady bottom. You can kind of really, really expect that Plague Rider is going to be suicide in bottom. And Dark Lady, yes, actually, technically Plague should win that lane, but Dark Lady is still going to get farm, mm -hmm. still going to get pretty much every last hit. Going to take a lot of harass, but if he can just con constantly ferry himself a regen, uh, she'll be fine. But if you did like a tri-lane Pebbles, Torturer, oh, yeah. and Nymphora top with the bubble solo mid, that would be so, so strong. I really feel like that would. Um, but th the other thing, too, with the Pebbles, a very, very good philosophy, is give him an extremely favorable lane to get that early portal key. Mm -hmm. that, that might be the smarter route to go. But I think whenever you're playing against a passive jungler, you need to be aggressive. Yeah. Because if you just let him sit there and farm, 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 you're going to have a, a extremely farm jungler compared to a very, very gimped support. Yeah. So. Well, I'm pretty sure, yeah, what we're probably going to end up seeing is uh, Dark Lady and Nymphora stay down here. Probably a Torture of Pebbles in a mid, or I guess Nymphora Pebbles. Uh, either or, we'll, we'll just wait and see what a Pudge decides to eventually do as far as their lane setups go. Of course, a natural thing to talk about when you have one team with a jungle and the other not with a jungle is the experience advantage that you would like to see, at least on TT Esports, as a result of that. So we'll see how that comes into play. I, I will say this. I'm, I am really excited to see Moravis playing Succubus. Moravis is such a powerful player, and Obviously, I think it's a great pickup for GT Esports, and definitely a very, I, th I think, even an underrated middle player. I mean, he's when you think of middle players, Moravis isn't a, a name that comes to mind a lot of people, but um, I think Moravis is definitely up there with the best of them. And again, playing a hero like Succubus, uh, the, well, I'm really looking forward to seeing how he does on that hero. Yeah, definitely. The, the hero is very, very strong mid. Just a super duper strong hero to put in that mid lane. And and maybe that maybe my thought of throwing bubbles mid against that is not the smartest oh, thing because bubbles definitely right, really should lose that lane. But we'll have to wait and see. Again, I really do uh, think that giving pebbles the easiest lane possible, giving him just putting all the priority on your pebbles at least in the early game is the route to go. Dark Lady, she's gonna find her farm eventually. This game, you just need to open up space. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and so, see. They are trying to defend this this ward. This is going to be huge for them. If they're able to s maybe even just stop Plague from getting this ward down, yes, they are. If they're able to stay here and make sure that that ward is not placed and, and they can just stay there and wait and get that and use that uh, pull to get a double stacked and get proper lane positioning, that is the first key. That's the first ingredient to getting a very, very good start here. Well, you look what Bubbles did on the other side of the spectrum against CT Esports. He was able to get up there. Ah. He used his Shell Surf. He bought the boots. He eventually sold them early on, and uh, and he was able to place that ward aside. So he's going to go back to base right now, buy all his items, and uh, get that mana regen, and he'll be good to go as far as that lane is concerned. So that's you, you could safely say that's going to be a better start here for Pudge now as a result of what just happened there. So that's uh, the good news for them, and you know something we it seems like we we are seeing a lot more of just a lot of teams. Usually it used to be, you know, maybe Complexity and then Fnatic when they were around and did just the best of the best, but a lot more teams are really picking up on that, how important it is to really not only block that ward spot, but also get it down for yourself, and it seems like that happens pretty much every game now. So that's a good start here for Pudge, and now we're getting an idea of how ultimately the lanes are going to be set up. It is going to be Nymphora Pebbles middle, you got the Dark Lady Torture bottom, and of course a Bubbles to Suicide up there. So, uh... With the Nymphora Pebbles middle, do you think maybe Glacius up here at the top lane going to get that early start for uh, Silhouette and then eventually m move to the middle lane here? Would you like to see that? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, again, I I've seen way too many teams where they just don't give enough pressure to that suicide lane before they go, so hopefully White does that. Um, actually taking a lot of damage right now, even from Bubbles, just auto-attacking like that, oh, basically at half HP. <laughs> We've seen Moon Manor do this before. Oh, he's taking so much damage! Yes. He actually could get a kill if he keeps auto-attacking. And maybe gets the Shell Surf. Oh, I feel like he actually could have even manned up just a little bit more. But um, good job there by, by Bubbles. And there gets the pull off. And he's going to get lane control. He's going to get this this whole wave for free, basically. Yeah. Um, so really good job there by Bubbles. But yeah, I would expect, hopefully, if they're able to, to keep down this Bubbles just a little bit. And then Glacius moves to mid. That is the right move, in my opinion. Uh, but it, it it's going to be hard because Pebbles, Nymphora, anyone gets caught in a, in a, in a combo there once they're like level 3. They're pretty much going to die. Mm -hmm. So that's the scary thing. There is a double stack here from Torture. That's exactly what you have to do. So props to P-Tob. P 
Hepetobe. I don't know exactly how to say that, but uh, good job by Torture. That's exactly what you have to do against a play who is naturally going to get lane positioning from that deny. Yeah, uh, very, very good job. I was also watching Leech near. He's actually started with his double stacked uh, Ogre slash Minotaur camp, and he had to even back off initially and use his health potion before he could finish it off. But he finishes it off right there. So a decent start, you could say, for Torture. But you talk about, I mean, Bubbles, or excuse me, Legionnaire, but you could talk about Bubbles, ultimate defend here at the top lane. Uh, pretty solid start for him. Got that decent lane control. He's already able to hit level two. And on top of that, I mean, he's even managed a three creep kill so far. So yeah, not the not the worst start by any means for Bubbles so far at that top lane here for uh, for, uh, of course, Pudge. And I, I did also do a ping all just out of curiosity and now that we're in the game, and especially with Vitalba, maybe seeing if he was lagging a little bit or what his latency was ultimately with at. And he is the highest in the game. He is sitting around that 290, as you said. It seems like his internet may not be the greatest. Oh, bottom lane in the meantime. Plague would actually dropping quickly. A couple more auto attacks should do him. And Canley on Black Escape right here. He does have some trees to eat through. Gonna try to juke, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Somehow, he is still alive. Trying to sneak past Dark Lady now, but there goes the Taint Cell. And Tjor there on Dark Dark Lady will pick up the Bloodlust kill. So things are looking very good for Pudge here to start off this game. In fact, Bubbles applying a lot of pressure to Glacius here at the top side. Shuts over hit. He's going to port in one more auto attack after this one. No, the nice freeze at the last second. And now Bubbles actually needs to be a little bit careful right here. He has a shell surf in 10 oh. seconds. The Death Lotus Knight missing. So that may be the saving grace for Ultimate Defend right here. Two seconds, one second. Where's the shell surf? Oh. Okay, never mind. He just wants to commit suicide, apparently. So he's just keeping them as occupied as much as possible, I guess. But I feel like he could even could have even just shell surfed above and then maybe killed himself afterwards, so that the the hero didn't get the or Slicks didn't get the yeah. experience. But yeah, unfortunate there. Um, yeah, that, that's a, that's a big deal. I mean, but Bubbles is still getting a little bit of farm. Plague Rider does get the well, sorry, Hell or Legion does get the Bloodlust onto uh, Plague Rider, so that's more important in my opinion. And Torture is still continuing to, to pull down here, but actually the ward does come out. It is late, so it's going to stop any kind of stacking coming out. So um, that is going to push up the lane, unfortunately, just a little bit. As you ha see, the wave right behind it um, is, is going to basically be a double wave. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to apply a lot of pressure before, otherwise this play is going to get a lot of experience, and that's exactly what they don't want. Moravis here in the middle lane. I, mean, I was just watching, actually. He got jumped on by both Pebbles and in 4 Again, a very deadly combination, but he was able to tank it quite a bit. Of course, that Heartache ability allows him to recover in a very nice manner, and it's also that great turnaround potential, you know, similar to, like, a Jirazai or Demented Shaman. So uh, Moravis definitely seems like he's holding his own here in what has basically been a 1 versus 2 in this middle lane. He's 13-1 now, 14-1, and he's also level 4. He's pretty much tied at even a, a slight advantage, I think, even, over Pebbles. He's going to hit level 5 soon. So, seems like uh, Moravius playing that Succubus, even in a one versus two situation, is actually doing a pretty pretty good job here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think Succubus is very good. And yes, she does have low range, but you're right. That heartache ability makes it very, very easy to stay in the lane in situations where you might be in a lot more trouble. Yeah. Um, because of the the massive difference in HP, uh, you gain a lot, and then they lose a lot. So it's it's very very good. Um, bottom lane. I just I, I want to put a lot of importance on this bottom lane because this plague right is basically going to get lots of experience if they don't counter this ward. Um, just the fact that actually plague was still able to get that ward off somehow. I didn't really see wh when or where it happened, mm -hmm. but that's a really really huge deal. Uh, if they were able to just constantly use his stacks, Plague Rider would literally be like level. She'd be level two from the sa from the first wave, and that's it. She yeah. would never get a single creep afterwards if if Legion played this correctly. Yeah. Uh, but you know that's unfortunate. That kind of happens. And actually, if you see at the same time, Bubbles get taken a lot of damage, but he's gonna be fine with the shell surf. Um, the, the ward actually that Bubbles place was countered, so <laughs> they're gonna have those pulls to work with eventually. Um, maybe at the six minutes. But actually, that was if if they did just counter it, that was quite late. I actually don't see a sentry there. Yeah. So maybe I think it, was, it just wore off actually. Yeah, they must have countered it um, some time ago and already used that pull. Yeah. So, but mid lane some action might be happening teal or torture actually. The city behind the succubus does have boots. So if they get a stun off uh, from pebbles, does he have Oh, there's a sleep action coming out. <laughs> He actually might take a lot of damage. No Succubus is thinking twice me about going in. Yeah. But here we go. Of course, uh, yeah, again, you mentioned Torture is right here. It's just a matter of can they get the position. Succubus is playing so smart, though. It's just a matter if... Oh, here we go. Chain reaction. Is Torture going to go? Dive, 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 dive. You can t ah, it seems like it's, it's so perfect. There we go with the Zeal Stun. In comes the Stalagmites. There's the Chain reaction. The Chuck on top of that. And down goes Moravis. So took a little bit of time, but a good patience there coming out from Pudge. And in the end... The gank was successful on a succubus right there. So Moravis, I mean, he was playing that fairly well, but in the end, obviously, it's just too much crowd control and too much burst damage for him to deal with.
Yeah, that was actually very, very scary because they. Act I feel like Succubus might have even been able to turn that if they didn't get the stuns or the chain stunts off correctly or, yeah. or fast enough, I should say. Um, here's the thing, though. This is why I think manning up on the tri lane when they have a, a passive jungler is a must because if you compare, say, someone like either Nymph or or, or Torture here in this mm -hmm. case, but one of those supports, compare them to someone else on that team on the Hellborn squad that is in a similar role where it's like they're. They're not really caring. They're not really a free farmer. I, I'm comparing them specifically to this Legionnaire, who has 40 CS and just basically free farming in the jungle here. Yeah, uh, th th it's just massive. That's where all this. That's where this difference in experience is going. It's directly on this. Uh, actually, I missed him. Actually, but Moravis does pick up a kill. It might be for his demise, though. He's taking a lot of damage. He will go down, but does get the kill on Pebble. So that's really. A good trade, in my opinion. No, oh, that worked out very well. I mean, he got jumped once again. The back end of the zeal stun did not hit, though, onto Succubus, and she had Pebbles slept through that as well. And so Pebbles, he tried to man up and help for the kill when Torch was running in, but of course the heartache was used up being level three and just enough damage for Succubus to at least turn around and get the one kill on a Pebbles. So yeah, that was definitely making the best of a bad situation there uh, by Moravis playing that Succubus. Bubbles in the meantime at the top lane. Legionnaire comes up with a ton. Nice takeover, but it goes through, so Bubbles in a lot of trouble. In comes the tree grapple stun and down goes Bubbles with a Death Lotus nuke. So Slicks here at this top lane looking very, very good. Meanwhile, Darkly, wow, nearly dying at the bottom lane. Succubus had poured it in, used her ultimate already, the Succubus hold, but the charging strike is going to be used by Darkly and she will survive. And near death experience for her. She's able to escape, but she will have to fall all the way back now to get experience or to, to regen even. So not the best situation all of a sudden coming out for Pudge. And meanwhile, back to the top jungle, actually, some more scary news for them. It looks like Nymphora is going to be able to port out in time. Oh, no, he gets frozen, actually. And this is probably going to be killing Nymphora if they play this correctly. Succubus, or excuse me, uh, Silhouette's going to go the other way around. And Nymphora is basically just going to dive the tower up here. Again, just kind of trying to make them use as much time as possible, seems like, before she eventually falls. There we go, and Slicks actually gets credit for the kill. Maybe trying to get out of experience range even, but wasn't going to happen. So all of a sudden, TT Esports in a pretty solid spot themselves now. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know what they had on their minds of torture and for roaming into the jungle like that, especially when Legionnaire is already level 7. It's just too late. That kind of stuff has to happen like when you're level 2, level 1 even. Um, and now Legionnaire, just as I said that, Ding's level 8. Yeah. He's at 310 gold per minute. This is the passive jungler we're talking about. This is why you need to man up and be aggressive on it. So that's why, uh, yes, it's nice giving your Dark Lady farm um, and supporting her that way, but it's just not worth it. Dark Lady is going to carry this game regardless if you, if you open up the map. Mm -hmm. And uh, put, put your emphasis on hurting them more because Dark Lady will, will rebound uh, in, the, in the later stages of the game. Yeah, and so really, you know, kind of where you would think the Legion team can try to look at right now is that Nymphora Pebbles combination. Pebbles is farming 300 plus gold per minute, so uh, in that sense, you know, not doing the worst. Nymphora is still level 5, so not level 6 just yet, but of course Pebbles well, well off uh, having his portal key. He does have a steam boost, just go that first as well as a bottle, being in the middle lane, but uh, probably going to be portal key as far as his next item of choice. But Succubus here in the middle lane, speaking of... Uh, other heroes to talk about. She is, again, she hasn't had the greatest time here, but it's understandable, especially with it being a one versus two, sometimes even a one versus three, as we've seen Torture come in here a couple times, resulting in a couple of deaths even on Moravis. But, you know, at the same time, Succubus is one of these heroes that, you know, sure, she can snowball and can be very effective with it, but at the same time, if she starts to fall behind, she can play more of a support role. She can use that Mesmerize very effectively in those fights. She can use Succubus Hold as pure as a pure CC ability in those fights, even. And the Heartache is still a very solid nuke, which is now level 4, so you're dishing out 300 true damage as well as healing herself. So, yeah, the fact that Succubus may be not having the great, greatest start here really isn't the worst thing for TTE Sports. Yeah, she does port to the bottom lane as we're just talking about her. Maybe Dark Lady knows something's up, maybe not. But uh, if she does get caught at unawares and tries to see yes this lane right here, uh, maybe she does know th something's up, though, because she's backing off away from the creep wave um, for really no reason. So if she, they do know something's up. Maybe they did see that the TP coming out with that ward that Mega B replaced right next to Moravis' ward, actually, mm -hmm. there in that bottom kind of river area. But um, aggressive push coming out from Jungle Devos as they uh, four people are mid. This tower is not very low, though, and this isn't exactly the greatest pushing team. Now, they do have a Torture, which is a level 1 impalement only, so it's not going to do all that much damage. Uh, they do also have a Ring of the Teacher on Bubbles, but there's the, the Glyph, and I'm pretty sure that's that's the end of it. Like, they yeah. can't push, so don't agree with this pushing at all. If you look at the disparity in experience, it's already extremely high, almost 5k in only 11 minutes. And, and at the same time, it's really like it's 5k, but nothing has really happened yeah. 
that's been that impactful. It's just been Legionnaire, honestly, taking up so much farm. Look, he's already level 9. Helm of the Black Legion, boots, another 300 gold, and there's a triple stack of boots. So. And you look at Slicks up here now. He is going to get Kelfield stunned in the meantime. Chain reactions will hit him, but I don't think it's going to be enough damage for a kill, actually. In fact, he could look to maybe turn this around. Oh, Nymphora is coming in, though. But you see the Whispering him, and the damage turning around gets that kill to Torch right there. Going for a kill on the Bubbles to take over. Not going to be though. He gets a double attack, and he may be able to get up a hat trick, actually. The tower is going to be denied by Mega Beaver right there, playing the Nymphora. But at what cost? Charge coming in. Nice. Zeal stun coming out, though, from for and she will live in the yam but talk about turnaround potential right there silhouette doing work taking the taint soul charging strikes not gonna happen though an excellent taunt by legionnaire actually and that'll keep dark hoodie from finishing off silhouette and slicks will gladly port back to base and get the regen on now yeah that was um that was pretty silly <laughs> yeah uh good job by slicks that was a really really good you know just heads up thinking that he could easily take out those two very, very squishy supports, and even faster if he uh, had connected that Death Lotus, but uh, good job by Bubble. Why, I shouldn't even say, well, okay, a, a nicely timed take cover, but just a really poor decision there to try to man up on a Silhouette, who yeah. does have those items, who has that extremely high damage output at this at this part of the game. Mm -hmm. um, when you're level 4 and you're level 5 support against a level 10 Silhouette, it's just... It's not not very fun. Yeah, that death float is especially, and the roll well, the relentless salvo really is. It'll just start adding up that damage, and it'll drop you like you're freaking hot, as we saw right there. So the double tap turnaround coming up for Silva, basically one versus three. Not too often you see that, but as you're putting it, when you when you're dealing with the items that he has and the levels that he's at, it, it kind of makes sense at the same time. So TT Esports, you talked about it earlier though. The experience advantage is just getting ridiculous now. We're already at a 6,300 experience advantage. Uh, in favor of a Hellborn team in TT Esports and just over the 13 minute mark now. Bottom lane, Torture may be in a little bit of trouble. And then Portho coming in with Pebbles. And actually now Leon Black on Plague the one in trouble. The Stalagmites will barely hit him. In comes the chain reaction. The deal's done. Now Ports are coming in. Plague will be finished off. Oh wait, did he get the Plague? No, he did not. I thought he got it off in the last second. But in comes a second miss. All Legionnaire and Celebrate join the party as well. Pebbles will fall right here. And so will Torture. Great tree grapple coming out from Slicks. And now Nymphora just running for her life. It looks like he will be fine. Although Psychic is coming in. Nice heartache. But I don't think the haste of Psychic is going to be able to do enough in the end to kill this Nymphora. Well, they're going to go for a tower dive, actually. We'll have another heartache in eight seconds. Does have the Mesmerize. 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 Taunt. Anything? No! Oh. Mega Beaver escapes. That's the black coming into play right there as far as not being able to see him. And a great escape in the end. But still, you can really say the damage was done anyways. And now they're also going to push a tower on top of this. Yeah, definitely. This is starting to snowball out of control very, very early on. Um, 5k gold. It's going to be even higher after this tower kill. And, yeah, Dark Lady, yeah, she's farming great and all, but you need to ha be, again, I, I got to say it over and over, but you have to be aggressive against the passive jungler. You just simply do. When you're passive against the passive jungler, it just, it snowballs out of control. Yeah, you just get too much farm. Legion yeah. This Legionnaire, I, I shouldn't even say he's the direct reason why they're losing this game right now. It's just simply they're getting outplayed the by really tower. everyone Hellborn at this tower. point. Mm -hmm. But if, if it was a much ev more even game, um, this Legionnaire would be so impactful. I mean, you're going to see it. This, he's very, very close to his portal key. And it's already snowballing out of hand. So yeah. we'll see. There is some action up top as... Uh, as Pebbles does have his portal key, they're going to get the combination on the plague, so that's a sign of life coming out from Jungle Devos. Yeah, it, that's obviously when you have an Infora team in on top of that. This is definitely still a chance here for Pudge. I mean, they're going to need to play very, very well, and they're going to need to catch TT Esports by themselves in odd spots, but it is now very possible. In fact, we see right here in Infora is going to pour Pebbles to the middle lane. Who are they going to drop? Those Silhouette going to run right into them. They do jump Succubus in the meantime. Succubus will go down, but Silhouette is, just happens to be right here, and I believe Nymphora at the very least will fall. Yes, she will, but Pebbles is going to be able to escape. So, I mean, that obviously a great idea coming out from Pudge, but unfortunately, they literally poured it right on top of Succubus happened to be there. They did get, or excuse me, Silhouette. They did get the kill on the Succubus, though, so in the end, it ends up being a one for one. But So this is that sign of life, as you put it, for Pudge coming out here on the Legion side as far as Pebbles on the portal key. But still, I mean, it's it, they are definitely still in a very deep hole here. Dark Lady's going to pour it out top before too much damage is put in here. But look at Pebbles jumping back here in the middle lane. Silhouette in a lot of trouble. Killfield coming out. There's a song of the sea. And Silhouette, no, the tree grapple. Not going to matter. Ultima defend. Picks up the kill. And how about that? Gets a 510 gold bonus <laughs> as a result of killing Slicks, who was 7-0-1 up until that point. That's a big kill right there. Yeah, that was huge. I think he, what happened was the... Uh, the tree grapple actually broke the uh, kelp field from Bubbles, uh, and yes. the extra damage did kill him. 
But uh, yeah, that gold is definitely going to help out. But I really think, okay, there's Legionnaire. He does have enough for his portal key. I really think that's when the the game is going to start to get way too more, way too difficult for this Legion squad. Mm -hmm. They do have the Rune Cleaver up on Darkly. That's very, very good for her. She's going to farm very, very fast. Not bad timing. I mean, six and a half minutes. That's not horrible. Yeah, it's not bad at all considering she was up against pretty much a solo, or was against a Suicide Plague who's constantly denying. Yeah. So it's slowing down your farm. Uh, yeah, her CS is very, very good. But you compare that to Silhouette who's had seven kills and on top of that, more <laughs> CS. Yeah. So Slick's doing a very, very good job. But that is Slick's oh, at the bam. same time. There's, yeah, there's a portal, portal key. key. Uh, well, you don't see, but we the text tells you. <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately, I missed the action. But again, that, that's a portal key for you in general. Obviously, you just jumped in. Looks like you just quickly charged and decapitated. <laughs> and nothing much torture could do right there. Now, Nymphoid doing a good job of actually pulling three camps right there. Only God stack on two, though, unfortunately. The Skelter King did not stack. But again, as you just mentioned, the Rune Cleaver purchased on Dark Lady. She just cleared up what was Triple Stack's Ancients, actually. So she now has surpassed the 400 gold per minute mark. And now she's going to come into the jungle and start cleaning up a couple of these stacks. So again, more and more good news starting to happen here for Pudge. But you, you just constantly have to wonder if it's ultimately going to be enough here for this Legion team as far as making a little bit of a comeback. Because as we talked about, Slicks on the silhouette. And you referred to this, I think it was a couple days ago, our previous cast, how Slicks is really just one of the most impressive players. Not only in just... Not only does he know how to farm effectively, but he also he, he stays involved as well. He's right. not just purely farming creeps. He also gets involved. In that. And this right here is another perfect example of the fact that he's 7-1-1, one, one, also with the most creep kills in the game, just speaks for itself right there. Yeah, he's oh, wow, middle And way. actually, right here, yep, <laughs> picks up another, just such an easy kill. This is exactly what I'm talking about. A Legionnaire with this kind of level, or with these kind of levels, this early on with that farm, Portal Key in particular. It just makes it so devastating, mm -hmm. and it's it's going to be even worse in team fights because how do you push up against the legionnaire when when he can when he can just collapse on all of you, jump on you, taunt you? It, it's really really difficult. Uh, the the only saving grace right now that J Pudge has going for them is that Nymph Four of Pebbles combination. They still can get pickoffs on a lot of heroes. Actually, they can pick off instantly the plague. Yeah. They can pick off instantly the the Iglesias, uh, the Succubus. I even think that they can pick off this. Uh, the silhouette. If she has her steam boots on agility, which she does right now, and if you catch her before she's able to change them or use that shark head, by the way, which she did, did just finish, oh wow, yeah, you can still pick her off. So this Nifor Pebbles combination is still very, very strong. You can still do a lot of things with it. It's not over just yet, but it's still looking kind of grim. Yeah, it's it's definitely still life here for for Dendi's jungle devos. I mean, by all means, it, they, they still have their positives, but you're right. It's it, at the same time, it is a pretty big hole here. Only being 19 minutes in. With that said, I mean, it does seem like we're actually even further in than really that, but only 19 minutes in here, and it is 11 to 7 hero kill advantage in favor of TG Esports amongst, of course, the 9,000 experience advantage, which I think is a really big thing, as well as the 4,600 goalie, which also isn't too shabby in itself. So, uh, Pebbles and Pebbles and M4 really haven't seen them move too much lately since they first started doing it a little bit. So we'll see maybe if that's going to come up right here. The scene M4 coming over. Arcana just purchased by Pebbles. So probably may, may want that to be delivered first or may just go for a gank if they find that opportunity, which could be at this top lane. You see Plague Rider kind of pushed up by himself a little bit. And we'll see if they maybe try to take advantage of that. Dark Lady going over the side shop. She has purchased her Abyssal Skull, actually. And she's going to get the Homecoming Stone on top of that. They're going to triple stack the Ancients right here. So, again, Dark Lady will probably head over here uh, on the way through clearing out the jungle and look to continue to increase her farm that much more. And it is creeping up very, very close to the silhouette, actually, as far as uh, she's only really now just over 20 gold per minute, really, behind silhouette. So that Rune Cleaver pickup it, it is definitely showing here. In favor of Dark Liddy. But you also look at that, uh, you look at Riser on that Legionnaire as you keep going back to it. And he's already been so successful with that Portal Key purchase. And it seems like that's just going to continue to grow, especially once he hits level 16. We're talking about an ultimate. And look at Nymphora, Torture, and Bubbles. With a level 3 ultimate, he only needs, what is it, 625, I think, life they need to have. So. Yeah, 625 health, and then he could decapitate them. So a quick jump and auto attack, and then a decapitate will get the job done. But there's a triple stack that just cleaned up, and Dark Lady has now surpassed Silhouette as a top farm. Yep, I mean, she farms so, so quickly with that Rune Cleaver. Has the Abyssal Skull already up, as well as another 1,300 gold. There's a portal key from Bubbles, actually, so some very, very good items being picked up right now. The other thing to note, too, is I always talk about is when you're up against Nymphora Pebbles, we, what we see right now is nothing happening. But if they're farming off the map, that still is like an indicator, okay, we don't know if Nymph Pebbles is coming. Mm -hmm. So what we see is like, why aren't they using their combo? But what they see is, 
they could potentially be gearing up to do a Nymph Pebbles gank right now. Yeah. So that's true. why I love Nymph 4 Pebbles, especially once you get the level 6 and the blink up on the Pebbles. Um, if you just start farming the woods, and actually as we see it right now, this Pebbles does have an Invis rune, wants to maybe make something happen with that. There is a sentry, no, there's a sentry in, in the mid for Mega Beaver. So they're gonna that oh, they're there's the initiation, up. there's the blink also, on, but there's the call, let's take over break. There we go, Legionnaire jumping in, in comes the torture chain reaction, stun though, Darkwood in the midst of it all, but Silhouette joining the party, and Darkwood he realizes she has to get the hell on out of there. Pebbles moving again, Succubus hole comes in, Succubus buys back, helps to assist for the killing of Pebbles right there, and four is gonna get caught in the glacial downpour, and will fall shortly after. So when it's all said and done, that definitely worked out much better for TT Esports right there. As I said, Moravis did buy back on Succubus, but a three for one exchange in the end. And they're also going to push to take out a tower here. And that is another power of Legionnaire. Turnaround potential is definitely there. As we saw, he PK'd in, got a taunt on three different heroes, and kept them in play for eventually oh boy, Silhouette and Plague Rider to come and clean up. Tower. Yep, definitely. Uh, he played it really, really well. He jumped in right afterwards. And uh, he just does so much damage. I mean, Riser on that Legionnaire has got so much farm. And it was all uncontested farm. And in fact, even Glacius was uh, going around the jungle, helping him as well, stacking mm -hmm. things a little bit and, uh, and, and helping him that way. And on top of that, you got Slicks, who's 7, 1, and 3. Now the top farm in the game with that uh, little bit of, well, you got a little bit of space <laughs> there. And uh, yeah, things again are looking actually way better now for TD Esports. As they get about a 13.5k uh, experience lead, as well as an 8k gold lead. Yeah. Yeah, man, 13,000 experience lead. That, that, is, that is up there. Only 23 minutes into the game, but God, that is, that is quite the lead. A level 16 silhouette already. Uh, of course, a big reason for them. They're going to do a triple stacked Ancients as a team right here and get farm on both Legionnaire and Silhouette and maybe even a little bit on Succubus in the meantime. Speaking of Succubus, again, Moravis hasn't had the brightest game when it comes to standing out with stats. Oh, bottom lane in the meantime, actually, Plaguard are getting picked off here. And what ends up being a five-man, no, four-man gank even. Starkly at the top, of it, but the rest are down here setting up a kill on a Plague Rider. So, kill's a kill, though, and that's uh, mission accomplished there in favor of uh, Pudge over here for the Legion side. But, uh, but yeah, so I was just going to talk about Succubus. He's got a Mighty Blade, Steam Boots, uh, on his way to, I guess, a Shrunken Head. Dark Lady will take out the top tower, though, in the meantime. And she already has another 1,300 gold saved up after that Blessed Orb purchase, so... Again, they're trying to hang in there, doing what they can, and this is definitely accomplishing that. They're going to push this top bottom tower, but they need to be careful because look at the Hellborn team. Legionnaire jumping in. Oh, nice portal key from Pebbles right before, though, to get the hell on out of there. Nymphor is going to try to port out. Will he be successful? Ah. Yes, he will. Now the tower should be denied in the end, which we see right there, but at least they both stayed alive, and so that actually worked out pretty well in the end for Pudge. Yeah, the, the way that they're going to have to do this is get some small pickoffs. There's another crash, actually, as the whole toss comes out for Pudge, but... Um, I mean, they still can potentially win this late game with Dark Lady. I mean, that hero we've seen just do work. And actually, she is now once again yeah. the top farmer in the game with 506 gold per minute. Silhouette short, you're trailing just very, very close to behind. But um, right, I, it's on. hard to, I'll tell you, in this kind of game, it's going to be hard to build items for Dark Lady. Mm -hmm. Like, intuitively, you're going to want that shrunken head because you don't want damage and slows and snares to happen to you. But... It's Trunken Head this game is very, very useless against Silhouette. Yeah. It's very, very useless <laughs> against Legionnaire. Pretty much does nothing against Legionnaire. Mm -hmm. And it's also quite useless against Succubus. Yep. So it's really, really hard. I agree with her that she's, she really can't buy a Trunken Head. She can't waste the gold on that. But that being said, it's, it's just going to be hard for her this game, I feel. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's farming very good. She's had very, very little involvement in this game, but that's not her fault. She's, she's doing what, exactly what she needs to. And I, I'm, I'm just simply saying it's going to be difficult when these fights actually be begin like 5v5, I feel like they're going to have to actually start with a pickoff or two for the Legion team to be successful. Oh, they're going to go for a pickoff here on the top lane. Silhouette, she doesn't have any clue. Question in 4 point up. Will they have enough damage is the question. I mean, this is Pebbles in 4. I don't even know if they're going to have enough damage, though. We see this yellow stop about the nice shrug just before. And in fact, Silhouette says, bring it on, bitches. I'm Silhouette. Going to go for a turnaround kill. With well, the death lotus missed the snipe, though. And now she's actually trying to get away. You see Pebbles coming in. In the meantime, at the bottom lane, we see a kill happening on it. Bubbles. Oh, Silhouette actually poured it to the illusion to get the kill. But she dies in the process. So an interesting choice there by Slix. Manning up to get the kill, but it ends up dying. Now Pebbles actually getting Kyra stuck in this hole coming out. And the illusion of Silhouette even going to assist for a kill. It gets the <laughs> kill, actually. The illusion gets the kill despite Slix actually being dead. That is pretty damn hilarious. That was pretty great. <laughs> That was fun to watch for Slicks. Yeah. I was going to say, initially when he popped that shrunken head, I believe it was his first time using it. 
The t oh, no, it was a second time, so it was a nine second one. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like you could have played that just a little bit better, killing that Nymphora and pursuing him fully with that tree grapple as it does give you a lot of movement speed. Unfortunately, missing the Death Lotus, but and then coming back in, that was kind of a crazy play by him. Um, but that was really, really fun to watch as the as the um, illusion does get the kill. Yeah. But as you said, meanwhile, Riser just getting more and more beefy takes out Bubbles. I didn't really see it because it was two things happening at once. But I'm going to assume that he destroyed the <laughs> 700 HP Bubbles. Yeah, like I said, he could literally jump in, charge, and decapitate. Just no more. Not yeah. even anything more necessary against Bubbles, Torture, and Nymphora even. So. Yeah, it's a very good situation here for Ryzer, to say the least, who continues to be a, such a big impact for TTE Sports in this game specifically here against Dendi's jungle devos, <laughs> something like that. Anyways, uh, Darkling just bought something. What did she, did she finish her Null Stone? Yes, she did. So she has a Null Stone now. So there's some like uh, that good sign. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I mean, you talked about how negative really the Shrunken Head would be because now that's the thing, though. Again, it's kind of one of those cases. It's, it's a nice item to have, but at the same time, you're dealing with the Succubus, so you can easily smitten that off. I mean, you're dealing with the Plague Rider Contagion, nuke that off. You got Glacier. I mean, uh, so I guess, yes, there, that goes back to the mentality of they will have to use it still, but uh, it still is kind of frustrating that there's so many ways to get rid of it. Despite it being powerful against Decapitate, you know, Succubus, all things like that. We do see Legionnaire coming in right here, right after the Conquer kill. Pablo jumps in a great count but will it matter in the end? The Plague bouncing out, that's going to be a huge couple of bounces right here. Darkly he finishes off Succubus, now going for a kill on the Legionnaire, but the armor stack is helping big time. Darkly he still wants to get the kill, but she is not going to get it. Slicks gets another pick off in the meantime on the Bubbles. Darkly he going for a man up kill on the Legionnaire, but it's not going to happen. What a tablet over the ledge. Legionnaire will be fine. Darkly he goes down, and the token of life silhouette is still sitting there. She picks up the double tap. And, well, if the game wasn't over already, I, I don't think that, that – that definitely didn't help things right there. That was a really good tablet by Leon Black there at the very end, pushing him over to the, to the Congor pit. Um, I'm pretty sure Legionnaire actually would have died there to the charging strikes, despite Dark Lady falling anyway. Dark Lady held her own actually quite well, that, that engagement, but the team died just too quickly. Yeah. And uh, she just doesn't have enough, really. She's going to have to be completely maxed out items. Um, the good thing is, is Dark Lady, once she gets very, very huge – and uh, she tries to initiate on somebody with those uh, Dark Blades activated, and then say Legionnaire jumps on top of her um, with the taunt. Mm -hmm. um, those, those Dark Blades are going to instantly silence him. But that, that's like in the later stages when, when you still try to jump that Dark Lady. Um, but right now, it's just the farm is spread out too well on both the Silhouette and Legionnaire. Uh, and even Moravis has some good items as well to keep her, keep himself a little bit tanky, mm -hmm. able to cast spells. The Plague Rider doing a lot of damage with that Plague Goo right there, as we just saw. Um, yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult for, for the Legion squad. Now, Pebbles is getting very close to finishing a, a Hellflower here, as well as even being level 16, and obviously help a little bit for this Legion team. And on top of that, level 11, Nymphora is in the near future, I think, I believe, here for our Legion side. So you can start porting with uh, also Bubbles or Torture or even Dark Lady in some certain situations, depending on what happens there. So, yeah, so again, still, it's just like we said earlier, still signs of life here for... Uh, for Pudge over here on the Legion side. Well, it's game number one of this best out of three, but it is no doubt in favor right now for TTE Sports on the Hellborn team. Now, Pebbles does finish the Hellfire. No, I think he still needs a couple more creep kills. Uh, I believe he has enough now. There we go. The third Arcane is purchased, and yes, he has enough now for the Hellflower and will be delivered here shortly. So he'll have a Hellflower going into his next gank here, or perhaps even team fight for this Legion team, which, again, will be very powerful, especially if, well, if they use it correctly, that is, and are able to follow up on it appropriately but that's definitely the big question here for our legion side for now tte sports they were farming a little bit but they are going to group up here in the middle lane and it looks like a possible push attempt going to be coming out from them and well it kind of makes sense they, they are kind of overwhelming now against pudge and pudge is going to counter by pushing the top in a little bit but they need to worry about their base here yeah slicks has just the perfect items this game i really really like every item build he's picked and, and in the order that he's picked it um, the, the Geometer Spain is very, very good. It, makes you, it gives you the ability to man up, and it gives you a lot of damage, yeah. a little bit of movement speed. It's just, it's, it's great. Actually, it's, no, I actually changed it more to get to the no, no, it really Legion Tower. But anyway, um, it's a very, very good man up item. It creates a lot of damage. The uh, Shrunken Head makes it very, very good against Bubbles, in particular, as well as uh, Dark Lady. Just the item build for Slick right now is perfect. He just picked up a portal key as well. Um, and, and this is going to look like very, very hard to push the defend. Oh, well, we see a couple of portal keys being used. They jump on a silhouette. Actually, silhouette's going to end up dropping right here. Now, Hellflower was not used. A token of life could come back up. Torture drops in the meantime in the background. Silhouette does take another stun. 
but she is going to be fine for now. But again, the Hellfire was not used by Pebbles right there, despite getting the kill. Slicks does pick up a kill off to the side onto Bubbles right there. And another portal key, and this one by Legionnaire onto Pebbles, actually. And that's going to be a great pick. There's a succubus holding it for Pebbles. Let's get off me, bitches. Oh Dark Lady, actually. What a stun coming out. The Rook Cleaver doing so much damage. Down goes succubus. We see Legionnaire chasing, but Legionnaire is actually very likely going to fall right here. Yes, he will. He got the kill to Pebbles just before, but he falls. Look at this huge dive, though, from TT Esports coming out. Zeal's double hit. That may help Dark Lady. Just enough. It's going to be so freaking close. Trading strikes. Yes, we get the kill to Zilla one. And now Plug is going to fall. A quad kill coming. <laughs> for T. Jordan, Dark Lady, the Rex stay alive. What was TT Esports thinking right there? They went balls to the wall, and they just, I don't want to say they threw the game by any means, but they just kept Pudge in this game 100% right there. I, I, I got to say, holy throw, Batman. <laughs> that was, I got to say, MV freaking P to Mega Beaver right there. He got some absolutely yeah, clutch zeal stuns. stuns. He got one, I think, on four clumped up heroes darkly, charged in, did so much AoE damage, and then again, right before Nymphora died, as Dark Lady was trying to man up on the silhouette, who does have lifesteal, by the way, and a ton of damage, yeah. was able to get the stun off on her before, so that Dark Lady was able to actually win that one-on-one -on -one battle. So, just absolutely, perfectly played there by Mecha Beaver. Oh, no, Dark Lady needs to be a little bit careful. I don't know about hanging around here at New Forest, porting in, actually. Oh, they're going to go for Kenneko. Jumps out on Kalashius, and look at Kalashius dropping three shots, and now Succubus is in a lot of trouble, actually. Port is coming in, but New Forest is here, but she's only by herself. No, Minotaur, one micro ring from Slick's actually coming out with the Minotaur stun. Dark Lady, maybe likely fall right here. He's going to go in for a counter kill. He needs to be so careful, though. He's trying to kill the Minotaur, actually. He is being slow, but another resurrection oh. happens, and look at Legionnaire joining the party. Legionnaire Tom coming in, and Dark Lady very likely going to fall. There's a decapitate, and Nifora probably going to follow suit. The Mesmerize on top of him. Good Zeal stun, but Mega Beaver, ooh, nice back end Zeal stun as well, but Mega Beaver, I believe you're dead, sir. It's just a matter of time now, and yes, he will fall. Now, Dark Lady does have, by all means, more than enough money to buy back. He has 4,800 gold saved up. But still, really unfortunate that it got picked off right there, because now he's very likely going to have to buy back, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I see a lot of teams do that, unfortunately. They, yeah. get, they win a big Way fight like sorry. that, they try to get too overzealous, and, and, or they just get overzealous, and um, just an unnecessary risk right there. It really was. They should have just taken the time to try to farm up a little bit. Use that, that what was it, like 60 seconds where Silhouette was dead yeah. to actually get more farm. The, the bio has happened from Dark Lady, so we're going to see a fight here. Yeah, of Maybe. course, now is not up just yet. She's going to be up in 10 seconds, but I think that's what TT Esports was going for. They, they knew they had to push to simply force a buyback, if anything, and they accomplished that, so although they're not going to push in the face at least just yet, they, they got Dark Lady to use, it looks like, around 1,500 gold or so, if not a little bit more right there, but she still has another 3400. She does buy a Slayer right there. Now, that will put her out of buyback range for a little bit here, so needs to be a little careful. I believe uh, maybe another creep wave, and she cleans it up, will possibly be fine uh, if she's able to get all those kills. But yeah, a little bit careful, a little bit dangerous situation here coming out for t -Jor and uh, Pudge, but it looks like TTE Sports, they are going to start falling back more and more, cleaning up the jungle, but they're not going to commit to anything just yet. But you said it, though, man. I mean, it just seems like if you're Pudge, it's, you just had a hell of a fight and no doubt a fight to keep you in this game. You know, but you got overzealous. I mean, you went a little bit too far, and when well, we saw him get picked off and now forced you to buy back, so it's almost as if, no, I don't want to say all of that turnaround potential was lost, but still, a lot of it was there with that. They could have really closed the gap a lot more. Yeah. Uh, I think it was at something like 7K, maybe 6K gold, and then 12K experience. They could have really closed that, taken advantage of all that time that you'd be farming that silhouette's not. Um, and, but unfortunately, then they tried to be, do something more aggressive and... and and it, it was a huge risk, and unfortunately, just it did not pay off. Yeah. Well, they are going to push the top lane. This is turning out to be really interesting here, because uh, they're pushing the top lane while TT Esports pushes the bottom lane. The thing is, the bottom lane, there is a secondary tower still here with full life. So uh, TT Esports will have to go through that first if they want to charge to maybe make a charge here. And I think, obviously, Pudge is very aware of that. So they're going to be the ones to play the aggressor here. And they're going to push into the base, and vulnerabilities are going to be used. Are we going to see any ports just yet? There goes a tower kill, but the invulnerability wearing off right there. And are we going to have a good old-fashioned base race here? Three people I don't have ports we... on the Legion side. Three oh, people. three people on the Legion side. Yeah, you're right. Actually, no, it's an M4, but an M4 has their ultimate point. There we go. They're going to port back. They get the racks. They're going to port back mid because you'll look at what's going on in the mid lane. Invulnerability is going to be used. 
And here we go. In comes that jump from Pebbles. A great kill field. Now the Dark Lady Ultimate was also used. Pebbles jumps in on the Succubus. But now he's going to get frozen as well. In comes Dark Lady. The Plague is not bouncing around just. It hasn't used it. Succubus is going to get taken out by Dark Lady in the meantime. Torture goes down to the background. It's so far two for one exchange. And actually, Dark Lady caught up big time. And Dark Lady will get decapitated right there. A hell of a kill coming up from the Hellboy side. Now, Dark Lady can buy back. That will be her final buyback, though. But she pretty much has to right now. There is no other decision. She does buy back. But the middle rack's damage already done. And now TT Esports is going to kind of reset again here, it looks like. Sorry, when I, yeah, and actually they're, they're trying to pursue maybe this uh, silhouette that use, use the Taint Soul. There's the jump in from Legionnaire. Ryzer doing a lot of damage. Just pretty much uh, destroys Ultimate Defend, playing that Bubbles. And they're going to get some more damage on, this, the, on, the, on the base here. The other racks does go down. Yeah, what I meant to say was the Legion side, meaning the people who are who are going against Legion. Uh, three people on TT Esports side is what I meant to say. Uh, did not have ports. And I feel like actually Ooh, yeah. they could have just kept pushing. You're honestly. right. You're I, right. I really they do. should have. And Ooh, when, that sucks. When you're down a significant amount like that, trading just uh, absolutely just trading racks is always the better decision. Always, oh, yeah. always, always. <laughs> because later on, if you are at equal racks and one messed up team fight, it could be the game. Mm -hmm. So trading racks would be been a much smarter decision. It was Plague that had to not have a TP. Glacius did not have a TP, nor did Legionnaire. So none of them would have access to go back there unless they sold an item, maybe went to the well, and bought a TP from the own Legion, uh, Legion's uh, shop and there. I think Pudge, actually, you can even argue, especially with Torture, has a better pushing team even. So, yeah, that you're right. And, you know, obviously it's a lot easier for us to see that information in the first place. You know, you, if, if you are the Legion team, you still de technically have access to it. You just have to click on everyone and, you know, check through the inventory. But... Man, only Silhouette and Succubus, I believe, had Homecoming Stones, as you put it. So, really unfortunate decision, you could say, there. Coming out from Push to choose to all pour back rather than make it more of a base race, which at the time they had the advantage of. Uh, but, you know, choose to go the ladder. So, really, TT Esports, I'm sure they're a little bit thankful even that maybe they did pour back to defend rather than trying to make it into a base race because that would have been really interesting. But, so, we are still at a case, though. Uh, uh, there is definitely still a fighting chance here for Pudge, no doubt. And especially with a hero like, like Nymphora. I mean, when you start getting into a game situation like this, Nymphora can play a huge role of, uh, well, if you're going to push us, you know, that kind of goes back to that pushing mentality of, uh, or trying to even backdoor almost, where you can use Nifora to take advantage of that yeah. and try to, you know, kind of snipe down a Rax or a tower even behind TT Esports. But they're going to get a Conger kill here uh, for Silhouette with the Token of Life now, as well as that Wing Bow she purchased. So, <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Yeah, and Dark Lady's out of buybacks, by the way. Right, she's oh. going to have to pretty much buy all, all, you know, go all in with all her items. She's very, very close to that Savage Mace. There's other things to be said. Yes, they did have Outer Towers. This defense tower was very, very low in the tier, the tier two defense tower in mid. I feel like that would have taken just, just a second. They also could have risked it and just straight up pushed their base. Mm -hmm. That probably wouldn't have worked. But uh, I really feel like still, with them being down at such a you know, down so much, I feel like they could have. It would have taken all of five seconds to walk your killer's defense tower, and then the glyph was already popped, so you didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. Um, the only other thing is, yes, the other team could walk to your well. And, and pick up a TP, but that would spend a lot of time as well. And I, I just think it's a risk. That was a risk that they could have t easily Worth taken. Worth taking. Yeah. The other thing is they did. It's also they did make a very very safe and very fine decision porting back, fighting. They they didn't have the Rex Rex actually destroyed yet um, when they ported back with the nymph ports and whatnot. But um, they just kind of coordinated that fight very sloppily. Mm -hmm. It's very unfortunate. I think at the time when Silhouette does not have a token, she really needs to be the focal point and and the per and the hero to actually get down and you can do that when you have um well she doesn't have a null stone i mean that's a very very core item on silhouette but when you have a health flower on pebbles and she has no null stone yeah she's very very susceptible now it's out of the question she's got a token you cannot go for her at mm -hmm. all which is very very scary because when she's dishing out that much damage it's gonna be hard oh actually a little bit of trouble right here legionnaire with a haste run running in he will get kelfield actually as well as health flowered so they just want to make sure to stay away but the legion team at complete retreat mode now as they're just all running for their lives, and it looks like it will be successful in the end, but that was really close right there. In fact, Silhouette dives big time, going for a big man up here at Slicks for a torture kill, but a nice seal stone once again coming out from Mega Beaver, and he will survive, but the Rax is going to start dropping. Do they have invulnerability back up? We're going to see here in a second. No, they do not, apparently. The melee Rax goes down, but here we go. Are we going to see another initiation come in, or will they wait for a better opportunity? You see, the ranged rack's not going to start to be beat on by Legion. Of Legion here, by the way, he's got a Behemoth's heart, that, that Demonic Breastplant. We really haven't talked a whole lot, bunch about items here. 
because of how crazy this game has gotten. But yeah, he is just a beast himself. Uh, but they basically just had to let the bottom racks fall right there. And that just puts TT Esports obviously in even a much bigger lead now. I still think that they could, if they're just more, if they're more perceptive, one, one person has a TP. Okay, now Succubus just bought one, but that was after already buying one from the, the shop. But yeah. they could be, I feel like they could really be abusing these Nymph ports. I mean, yes, she is only level 12 and she can only take two other people. But still, if you're not getting anything else out of it, if you're just sitting here watching your your base get destroyed and there's nothing you can do, I feel like you could still abuse the fact that only one person there had a TP had a homecoming mm -hmm. stone. So, um, I mean, that's the beauty of Nymph is she's pretty much the backdoor queen or king <laughs> in this case. Yeah, uh, being paid by Peter Pan. <laughs> no, just Mega Beaver is the Peter Pan skin. But um, yeah, I, I think initially. Just being very perceptive of TPs at, at this at this time, stage of the game is very very important. Yeah, you're you're so right. I mean, <laughs> it's it just seems like that. If if somehow if Pudge is going to win this game, that's how it's going to have to happen. I mean, right. really, at this point, fighting head to head, that's clearly proven not to work out uh, for their benefit. So, you know, taking advantage of that possible backdoor strategy or just really catching them off guard when they don't have ports is big time now. We see up here at the top lane, a big five versus five skirmish, perhaps going to come out right here. Dark will be the one to initiate. In comes uh, Pebbles in the background. They're going to look to drop Silhouette, actually. She does have the token of life, remember, but they still cannot kill her. Dark in the background, being locked up by the second assault. The bounce from Black Gunner, and Dark going to take the Mesmerize at the last second. Silhouette stays alive through all of it. Four players are dead, and then four, the only survivor. She'll eventually be Oh, he gets the kill, actually, just before. Going to try to pour it out, and it's not going to happen, though. Like, it really wouldn't matter, though. Hatcher coming out for Slex, and I think the game may have just officially ended right there with those pickoffs. So, you know, Pudge, they're, they're just chances completely running out. They got a little bit desperate there, but in the end, obviously, it wasn't nearly enough. So, yeah, you can't blame them for, for something like that. Yes, they did lose 5 to nothing in that engagement when they had the jump, but... Really, they were already looking at a, an enormous deficit, which just grew right there. And uh, they had to try something crazy, and they went for it, and, and hats off to them for trying it. But, yeah, definitely TTA Sports is going to take this game. Um, but uh, they, they put up a fight. I mean, Pudge did have some good ideas. I loved their draft. I yeah. think uh, they could have done a couple of different things to maybe um, help their chances, specifically laning. But uh, good job overall. Let's not take anything away from TTA Sports. They played it well. Slicks specifically, 17-3 and three silhouette doing work this game, especially, oh, also Riser, um, he, who had a very, very good uncontested farm in that, in that jungle there, and uh, he's done a lot of work this game as well. Yeah, 9-1 and 16 Riser, 17-3-9 Slicks, it's just really standing out right there. Look at Slicks, that Doombringer purchase, and well, he is just, uh, as it said, unstoppable right here. So I'm a little bit, I'm not sure why Pudge honestly hasn't conceded yet. Uh, we <laughs> you see CC being called. Uh, oh, okay. So he's telling them to CC. I get it. Oh, because he's so. in the base there. Gotcha. Dish not damage to that tower. Oh, okay. look at that. Pebbles is up here. I think he's going to lose this battle. Back door in the tower, and he's dead. Yeah, that didn't work out too well. So it is going to be official. There we go. The Conceivo goes through, and TT Esports will take game number one here in this best out of three. So, again, it is a best out of three, though. And as you said at the end there, I mean, Jungle Devos. They're not a joke by any means. I mean, again, this is a newer team on the scene. Really just don't know much about them. Uh, so I was really intrigued, especially myself. I'm sure you guys are at home to see what they're about. And they gave TT Esports a run for their money, no doubt. I mean, that was a very solid first game there. But at the same time, they did make some crucial mistakes. I mean, they had chances. The biggest one was that quad kill Dark Lady that we talked about. Calm down, you know, take a, take take advantage of that, get more farm. Instead, they went for a little bit of a push, and obviously we saw the end result with that, with them getting picked off. That really uh, was an unfortunate circumstance for them. So that was a chance to come back, but just wasn't able to happen, Trev. Yeah, definitely. And I wanted to comment, too, on just the, the lineup that TTE Sports ran this yeah. time. It was much more conventional, and honestly, it's – it feels better to see them run these kind of lineups because it, they, it works. <laughs> it, it's very, very standard, and it, it, it's, there's a reason why it works. Yeah. It's very, very strong. Having that very strong uh, dual lane, kind of pseudo tri lane and the safe lane. Legionnaire can help out a little bit once he gets maybe level 3. Not the most uh, aggressive jungler. But um, there's still the idea of very, very strong uh, Suicide Hero and Plague. Mm -hmm. Very, very strong solo mid that can gank something like a Witch Slayer or a Fae that we see a lot from Complexity. And then, of course, the hard carry in the safe lane with a good support yeah. and, a, and a kind of jungler. And that worked out so well. It's very, very 
different, I feel like, than what TT Esports usually does. You're usually right. Usually what they do is much more stun, five-man ganking uh, oriented, pushing uh, as five all the time. That seems to be u their usual style, but this is kind of fraying away from that. And uh, it, it's, it was fun to watch. It, you're right. And this, this is, although it's kind of unique for them, this is definitely that powerful strategy right now, as you put it, especially complexity kind of being the leader with that right now. So it's good to see TT Esports doing that. But here we are. Game number one is over, of course, so TT Sports to take the first game, but game number two is just around the corner, guys. So once again, sit tight. I'm Breaking CPK. Joining me is Charles Mador. We'll be back with game number two here between Dendi's Jungle Devils taking on TT Esports. Stay tuned. <laughs>